doing. Amen. Appreciate his grace and his goodness. Amen. Just thankful for this privilege again to be in the house of the Lord again. I do appreciate Brother Jamie and his congregation over the years. Amen. Brother Jamie has uh, led... uh, by example, amen, to minister to people in need, and I'm thankful for uh, his example. I think many times uh, he's come alongside of pastors and people struggling, amen. The congregation has come along with him, and uh, it's been a blessing. I know our family, and we was pastoring in White Springs, amen, Brother Jamie, and uh, your congregation, amen, was a blessing to our family, and I just appreciate uh, that and all that you've done, amen, just believing the Lord's going to help us this morning, amen just thankful uh, for all that he's done. If you have your Bibles with you, take some time this morning and turn with us over to the book of 2 Thessalonians this morning. Amen. Just thankful again for this privilege. Amen. The honor to be with you, these other pastors and preachers. Again, I was blessed by each service that have been able to be part in and uh, just thankful that God has been uh, good to us. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. I want to look at just a few verses of Scripture there, if I could. Amen. Appreciate uh, the mercies of the Lord. Amen. I, I, I thank uh, Brother Jamie. Amen. I told my wife, I said, under pressure sometimes, uh, titles is not my thing. Amen. Just not something I've ever really been good at. Uh, but uh, just appreciate the Lord and, and just thankful. So uh, we'll try to stick close to it this morning if the Lord will help us. But uh, don't hold me to it. Is that all right this morning? All right. Amen. Uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, verse number 1. One, if you have it, would you say amen? amen? It says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Amen. The Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you? And keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord, he said, direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. Amen. I I appreciate the mercy of the Lord. Before we see it, would you join with me in prayer? And let's just ask God to help us one more time in this house this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your many blessings upon us, Lord, as we come this morning. Lord, touch each soul and strengthen each heart, God, and minister, we pray, God, for each and every soul you desire to touch and to help today. God, I just thank you, Lord, and I give you praise, God, in this house this morning for all that you're able to do. God, we give you the glory. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Oh, God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Thankful again, amen, for the mercies of the Lord. Again, such an honor to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. If I could just for a little while, amen, I want to preach, amen, along the simple lines, amen, looking once again at these verses of Scripture, amen, primarily drawing from, if I could, verse number five, amen, again, Paul the Apostle expressing to the church in Thessalonica, amen, the need for endurance and the need for continuing in the faith and the need for not becoming distracted by all the other things that were taking place in life and all the confusion and all of these uh, separate issues that were, amen, found uh, found in their hearts uh, or in their lives or was going on around them, again, to be caught up in the commotion of the day. And certainly, we are finding the same thing going on in life today. A lot of uh, information comes our way. But uh, as I read this verse of Scripture, amen, I want to jump on down to verse number 13. Uh, If I could, it was in the uh, text there, amen, I didn't read it to you, but he said, but ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Amen. How many of you realize that's still a need today within our hearts and our lives? Amen. Not to grow weary. Amen. Not to become, amen, worn out. Amen. Or so beat down that we have no strength. Amen. Left to continue on. Amen. When Brother Jones was preaching yesterday, amen, I thought as I read that verse number 
5, amen, direct our hearts into the love of God. Uh, he preached the message entitled, Refresh uh, Our Love, amen, for the Lord. I believe it was. Uh, amen, and how so often that is the need, uh, amen, for us. Amen, challenge my heart. Uh, amen, it's easy, Brother Jamie, to get caught up uh, in doing, amen, and forget that it is the love that we have for him, uh, amen, that should carry us on. Can somebody say Amen. Amen, there is a need for us to remember this in mind. Uh, amen, but again, if I could just for a little while, weariness, uh, amen, is one of those things, uh, amen, that happens to take place in between, if you will, the, the well-doing and the well-done. Uh, amen, weariness is that thing that we find ourselves having to deal with through it all. Uh, I don't know about you, Brother Hall, but I want it to be my desire uh, each and every day to hear him say, well done, uh, thou good good and faithful servant. Amen, Brother Hanks, I think it was. I'm not sure if he's the originator of it. Amen, but Brother Hanks said, if we're going to hear him say, well done, we will have to have done well. Amen, oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Amen, and I don't know about you, but that's a desire, should be the desire of every believer. Amen, to be, amen, doing well for our Lord. Amen, oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Again, weariness is a byproduct of laborings. It's the result of the many toils in life. Amen. Weariness is simply defined as that. It's the beating, if you will, or the beating out. It is quite possible just because of labor that we grow weary. Amen. There is a need to be refreshed. Amen. There is a need for us to come to a place of rest and be restored and be renewed and be be strengthened once again. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. The, the simple truth is to refresh. Amen. As it's already been stated this week, it's to stimulate the memory. It is to make fresh again, to reinvigorate or to cheer. Amen. There was a story, an article, amen, that I found, amen, some years ago. And I had several stories, didn't want to come give you a history lesson. Amen. But there was a man by the name of Ernest Shackleton. Amen. If I I got his name correctly, man, he was... Uh uh, an explorer. I mean, he's most notably known for trying to explore the Antarctic. Uh, and the name of his vessel that he found himself uh, uh, on at one time, the most notable uh, one of his exp uh, you know, uh, expeditions, if you will, was that uh, of his amen, desire to uh, sail the Antarctic Sea. There's a grueling expedition. Uh, and there's uh, some debate about uh, the ad that was placed in the British papers uh, regarding the, the treachery journey they would be on uh, but there was amen, simply the vessel that they they implored uh, or they employed to take into this uh, a dangerous journey was called the HMS Endurance. Uh, amen. Oh help us Holy Ghost. Uh, Ernest Shackleton and his crew of 27 uh, they, they, they desired to, to find themselves in that place uh, exploring new ground uh, uh, going amen, into where there have never been really people before and I could go into the lesson or we could get into the, uh, the, the, the exacts of the story uh, but something that stood out to me was they found themselves uh, caught in the ice. Uh, I believe it was for some 10 months that vessel was there stuck uh, in pack ice. Uh, I, I can't even fathom that brother Chris. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that's not for me alright. Uh, that's not some journey I want to be on. Uh, I, I don't want to be in that kind of condition uh, but can I tell you these men embarked on a journey uh, with some hope in sight. Uh, oh, help us God. Uh, and this was their endeavor, but they labored there uh, stuck in that condition. The, bro the, the boat or the vessel would soon be so caught and it would break apart and they'd have to get out on the ice uh, and they would be there. And I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, they found themselves uh, at the time that they left to the time that they would soon uh, or they would be finally recovered some 20 months. Hey man, I can't even fathom that, living in those conditions. But all 27 of them, hey man, made it out. 
Amen. Their, their journey was one. If we had time this morning, I would share with you some of the things, but there's one, amen, part that just stood with me. They said to themselves, amen, some of them had to go on a little bit further to a, 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 a welling, if I'm not mistaken, a welling station that was there. Amen. And those that were left were left on an island called Elephant Island. And as they were there, amen, they, they found themselves getting up every morning and going to bed every night, trying their best to survive, trying to stay warm, amen, looking every day, amen, for their hope to return, for their safety to, amen, soon be back. And there was a call by one of those that led every morning and said, look up, fellas, shore up, men. Amen, today may be the day that we're leaving here. Amen, can I tell somebody in the church, amen, every pastor, every preacher, every saint of God, amen, today may be the day, amen, that our home, amen, is just inside. Oh, God help us, Holy Ghost. Amen, again, Paul, even the apostle said these words, the Lord is faithful. Amen, he, he mentioned this, and this is the reality. Here's one of the greatest men in the scriptures that we read of, amen, or in the New Testament, Paul the apostle, and he says that we may be delivered, he said, from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men, he said, have not faith. He was expressing uh, the reality is there is hardships in life because of the human conditions of the day or the men and the individuals and the things that have to be dealt with. He said, but the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? Amen. But as I read on a little bit further, verse number five is what began to stand out to me the most. He said, the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9 for us to not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Weariness is a byproduct again of just the toils of life. Amen. Weariness is amen a byproduct of amen just going through each and every day but it also is a tendency if weariness amen continues to be the, the thing that is paramount or persist. It has the ability to bring us to a state of faintness. Amen. A place, amen, of broken down. A place, amen, of utter exhaustion. That's what the term faint means. It's to have no more strength. No more ability. No more, amen, left to give. Oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. But even if there is, amen, weariness in our lives, it does not had to exempt us or cause us to quit in well doing. Amen. It does not have to cause us, amen, to quit and surrender and give in to the temptations of life. Amen. Why is that, Brother Mitchell? It's because, amen, what Paul says, amen, he said, direct our hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen, to direct our hearts, amen, into that, that desire, into the love of God is a, is a call to, amen, establish us, amen, and equip us, to guide us. It does not, amen, spiritual maturity and stability, amen, are not just poured into life. Amen, but it is an effort on the soul. Amen, to stay committed to the task. Amen, Brother Jamie, there are conditions where we're wondering why. Amen, how is it gonna work? When is it gonna change? Amen, but all we've got to do, Brother Elijah, amen, is keep trusting in God. Amen, keep believing in his word. Amen, keep holding on to his unchanging hand. Amen. Paul's prayer was that God would establish them and guide them, guard them, amen, from evil to keep them. God's work of establishing and guarding and keeping through his word, amen, is an appeal for you and I to obey him in his truth. Amen, his word in obedience, amen, to follow. Oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Brother Aaron preaching the other night. Amen, that word stood out to me, brother, when they said go after it. Uh, amen, I think we're gonna need a little bit of that in this hour that we're living in. Can somebody say amen? 
the Lord direct our hearts, he said, Paul, Haman's prayer was this, Haman, his final appeal to him, if you will, finally, my brethren, amen, he said, pray for us. And his desire was that God would direct their hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting of Christ. I'll try my best to hurry. Amen, the word there, patient waiting, amen, has a unique phrasing or a unique uh, uh, way of describing it, amen, patiently uh, and waiting, amen, as a hopefulness, uh, but it is uh, is simply defined as steadfastness, consistency, it is also endurance. Uh, In the New Testament, the word, amen, describing or to describe endurance or that patient waiting is a characteristic uh, of a man who is not swerved uh, from his deliberate purpose. How many of you realize the devil's looking for distractions? He's looking for every means he can to cause us to get off course, to discourage the church, to disappoint hearts and lead them into despair. Amen. One of my amen favorite, amen men in the Bible, amen, was a man by the name of Samson. I understand brother Chris, amen. He's not the most spiritual of examples and we could look at his life as a tragic story story. Amen. We could look at him as a cautious tale. Amen. And that is a reality. Amen. He never fulfilled what God had him. Amen. To fulfill in its fullest degree because he couldn't keep his mind right. He couldn't keep his heart where it needed to be. He was willing to give it everywhere else. Amen. But why I am so interested in Samson was not the mistakes that he made. Was not the troubles that he found himself in. Was the latter end of a story. The Bible says he died in faith. Amen. He's listed there in the book of Hebrews in that Haman Hall of faithful men and women. Again, his story is a cautious tale. Amen. I'm not here to put him on some sort of pedestal, but the Bible says Amen, at that last moment, amen, he cried out to God, uh, amen, that he called on the name of the Lord, uh, amen, that he looked up to heaven, amen, uh, amen, he called a fresh vision, his eyes might have been gone, uh, but spiritually he was renewed, uh, and he realized what God called him uh, all along to be, Uh, can I say that again, Uh, amen, he called a fresh vision, uh, amen, of heaven, Uh, he called a fresh vision, uh, a victory found in the Lord. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. A deliberate purpose. It is his loyalty to faith and piety or righteousness. Amen. That even in the greatest of trials and sufferings. Amen. We have a prime example, do we not? Amen. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter number 12, we know these verses well. Wherefore, seeing we are all compassed about or also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Amen, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. There's that term again. Endurance, amen, bearing up under the load. Amen, holding up, amen, under the pressures. Oh God, he said, bearing, amen, or patience, run with patience the race that is set before us. But verse two, he changes the description. It's not looking at self. Amen, it's not looking at our own abilities. Amen, it's not looking at what we can do in and of ourselves. But he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to keep my eyes on the Lord. I want to keep my heart set on his word. Amen. He said, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Amen. My former pastor, amen, the pastor I got saved under. It's hard to say that when you was in church all your life. Amen, but I wasn't always a Christian. Is that all right this morning? Amen. Brother Jamie tried, amen, when I was a young teenager when we first came. Amen. He was part of that uh, uh, teaching there and the training within the church. Amen. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, amen, the, the teenagers they had to put up with, God love them. Amen all I can say. They, amen, they had, they had their hands full. All right. And I wasn't the worst of the bunch, but I wasn't the best neither. Right? Is that all right? Hey, amen. We'll just move on from that. But nonetheless, amen, I, I remember, 
I remember that my former pastor preaching messages when I got saved under Brother Steve Griffin was my pastor I got saved under at the Clay Hill Church of God. And Brother Steve Griffin, he preached a series of messages. I don't know where he got it from. I'm, he might have borrowed it from somebody else, praise God, but he turned it into his own and the Lord helped him. Uh, amen, but he preached on the, the mind and the battlefield. Uh, amen, that we find ourselves in as believers. And the title, I think it was, uh, it's, a, it's a battlefield, not a playground. Uh, can I tell you, sir, ma'am, we're living in perilous times uh, and we need to have every effort within our hearts uh, and our lives, uh, amen, to do our best. Amen. To stay focused and serving the Lord. The minefield, if you will, that place, amen, that the struggle is so real, that the struggle is so hot, amen, and hard at times. Amen. It's difficult. And I'm not here by any means trying to critique, amen, you and your faithfulness to God. But if I could just take some time to encourage the saints and to equip them, amen, and strengthen them, uh, amen, to help them understand, amen, to endure, uh, amen, to be able to bear under that load uh, and to bear up courageously uh, in the face of suffering. Uh, amen. Peter knew what he was talking about uh, in First Peter chapter number one verse 13 amen he says unto you and I wherefore gird up the loins of your mind amen he's already spoken about a hope amen that fadeth not away a hope that is reserved in heaven for you and for me amen that we've been begotten again he said to a lively hope he said we are kept by the power of God amen through faith unto salvation and he said ready to be revealed Revealed in the last times. Amen. I'm telling you, Peter understood what it was to fall down in the fight, but the Lord to say, When thou art converted, strengthen the brethren, stir up their minds, encourage their hearts to keep pressing on. Amen. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. He said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. If self-preservation isn't something, amen, we're interested in, amen, God, I believe is preserving his church. Amen, and those that will trust in him, amen, he's gonna carry us through, Brother Thornton. Amen, I believe he'll carry us through, but self-preservation ought to be a desire within our hearts. Amen, I'm coming to a close quickly. I, I, I can't see there is a clock, and that's the first time I've noticed it, Brother Jamie. Amen, praise God. Amen, but nonetheless, at least you can see that when the numbers are better. The one at my church can't see it. There's a glare on it, and I don't even pay it no mind. Amen, but nonetheless, amen, we'll move on. My wife, amen, her, her father, we lost him in January. Amen, he, you know, just to kind of give you some context, he liked, Brother Elijah, he liked those old Western type or those old classic movies, black and white. Every time you've seen him, he was always watching some of those. I, it just seemed to be all the time. The Turner classic movies, I think it was. But nonetheless, amen, he knew all the actors, knew all the people, and if I would have thought about it, Brother Ellis, I'd have asked him way back then and all the 20 years that we'd known each other, you know, I would maybe put a little more investment in asking him, but there was a man by the name of Audie Murphy. Hey, man, I don't know if many of you know who he is. He was an actor, hey, man, one of the most uh, decorated, uh, at the time, I believe it was, one of the most decorated uh, uh, soldiers within the American forces, especially in World War II, I think he falsified his uh, papers. I just ran across this story a few months back and although I, I don't know why it took me so long to get on board with him, praise God. But nonetheless, amen, it's an amazing story when you think about what was accomplished and one of the, great, one of the last greatest victories that our forces, at least in America, has seen was World War II. I mean, we've been in conflicts, Brother Elijah, since then, but I don't know that they can celebrate many victories I mean, they can't celebrate many accomplishments. Matter of fact, here recently we've had a, amen, a policy of appeasement, it seems like, but I'll just digress for a moment. But Audie Murphy, amen, was simply one of those, amen, unique characters 
believe he falsified his papers even to get into the, the forces, if I'm not mistaken. He was too small to be accepted by anybody but the army, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong about that, but nonetheless, I mean, he had labored there and fought in many battles already, but in January 26 of 1945, Audie Murphy and about 40 troops were there, amen, and they were uh, found themselves having to cover a road, or reinforce a road, or to hold it until reinforcements arrived. And it was snow covered. Amen. It was a frigid place. It was cold in that time. Uh, they found themselves, I think it was northern France. Uh, and I could give you the name of the, the, the little town that it was there. There's a memorial, matter of fact, that it was yeah, that's out there. But what happened was uh, they found themselves under attack. Forty of them even against, I believe, some 250 soldiers of the German forces in that last uh, effort of Hitler to, you know, the, to, to find a victory for his, uh, you know, his regime and his movement and all there that was taking place. And again, I'll, I'll just be quick if I can. Even a lot of history, if you get time, read the story. It's an amazing uh, uh, point, uh, if you will. It's, it's amazing how, uh, how that he stood there for over an hour uh, uh, after they had initially fell under attack. Uh, one of the pieces of machinery that they were there with, a tank buster they called it, had a 50 cal on top of it. Uh, it had been shot with the artillery from the enemy it was on fire smoke was everywhere uh, and as he emptied out his M16 uh, amen, he'd already commanded his men to fall back uh, into defensive positions but they were under attack uh, with his radio there uh, he's calling in artillery strikes uh, and he's trying to fight the enemy uh, he's doing all he can to bear up uh, under heavy pressure hey, amen uh, he's doing all he can just to survive uh, and make it through uh, amen quite like many of us sometimes uh, Hey, man, we feel like we're fighting on this side, fighting on that side, doing all we can, hey, amen, just to make it through. Hey, amen. I don't know, maybe you've never felt that way, but I've run across some unreasonable men. Hey, amen. I've run across some folks that just don't have faith. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. We'll move on this morning. Praise God. Hey, amen. This isn't therapy, is it, this morning? All right. We'll move on. Praise God. But Artie Murphy... Amen sat there on top of that piece of machinery, said the fire and the smoke, amen, caused the enemy not to get no closer. They was afraid it would blow up. And he was kind of shielded by the smoke. But for over an hour, he, amen, laid down a fire to keep his men, amen, protected or somewhat protected and to keep the enemy somewhat at bay. And he sat there, amen, I believe it was, even a piece of shrapnel went into his leg. He finally, man, after he ran out of ammunition, had to fall back. He been with the rest of his forces, and they were going to evacuate him because of his injuries. But he said to them, "No." He wanted to stay and fight with his men and they rallied a defensive and they began to fight back and again, the rest is history. But there was a unique phrase even that stood out to me that Audie Murphy said. He said it in the midst of the panic. And all that was taking place, there was a familiar feeling. Even though he was 19 years old at the time, uh, hey man, there was a familiar feeling uh, that he had to keep on pressing on. Uh, he learned to control it uh, within 18 months of fighting through Italy and France. Uh, but this was a phrase by Audie Murphy that he described. Uh, hey man, they wanted to call him a hero. He didn't feel very heroic. Uh, he said these words. He said, bravery uh, is just determination to do a job uh, hey man, that you know has to be done. Can I tell you, sir, ma'am, now it's not the time to grow weary. Now it's not the time to be discouraged. Now it's not the time to quit on God or to give up on him. Amen. Get up. Go on. Let the Lord refresh your soul in this house today. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a commitment to a job that you know has to be done. Amen. I just think about that. Amen. As he was standing there, he said, finally, he said, I fought to stay alive like anyone else, I guess. Amen, Brother Thornton, if, if we get discouraged, if we get downhearted, amen, if the pastor starts to lose courage, amen, if the leadership in the church starts to be discouraged, amen, what do you think is going to happen to the rest? I'm not saying we don't face the scourge. I'm not saying that the pressures aren't there. 
I'm not saying that the, the, the challenges aren't real. I, I'm by no means trying to make light of any struggle. I'm simply just saying, amen, that we cannot allow ourselves to be so drained down. Amen, discouraged. He said that you would be directed into the love of God and the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. We were singing that song right before service. Brother Jamie, I don't know how you want me to close here this morning. Brother Javardo turned it over to you. Amen. If that's the case, I'll turn it over to you this morning. If not, if I can get one of the sisters to help with the piano play and we'll close. Amen. Oh, all right. Sisters, I, I heard he was timed out this morning. Praise God. You're not a sister. <laughs> Forgive me, brother, I didn't know. <laughs> Amen. We were singing that song. Uh, everybody will be happy over there. You know what? I, in my hey man, 20 years of being in church or around church, hey man, when you look at a choir singing that song, I don't think we understand the words we're singing. Praise God. <laughs> hey man, I, I kind of get caught up kind of comically watching everybody because ain't nobody happy here. I guess they're waiting until we get over there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> But nonetheless, amen, the man that wrote that song was a man by the name of Ian Bartlett. And Ian Bartlett, amen, is not known for a lot of the songs that he wrote. And I like that last verse, amen. It will look upon his face. (laughs) The one who saved us and kept us by his grace. (laughs) Amen, aren't you thankful for the grace of God? The keeping power of the Lord, amen. Amen, he's able to keep the church, amen. He's able to keep his people. There's a nation gonna find that out here soon. (laughs) Amen, that he's gonna keep them. Amen, he doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. Oh, help us, Holy God. I was telling some of the folks in my church last night. Well, I get sidetracked easily. That's all right. I was telling some of the folks in my church last night, right after that attack in Israel, some of the Taliban from Afghanistan said to themselves, you know, if somebody open up a corridor, we'll go over there and fight. God said, I got different plans, and I'm by no means trying to say that what happened wasn't tragic. But a 6.3 or 6.8 earthquake hit Afghanistan, not the next day, I believe. Amen. God let them know you don't want to get in this thing. Amen. You want to keep out if you can. Amen. I just found that to be just like God. But Ian Bartlett wrote the song, Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. And there's only one other song in the Redback Hymnal that I'm aware of, and there may be more. I'm not, you know, not saying I, I know it all, but Ian Bartlett wrote another song that I think has a little bit more meaning to it. Amen, a little bit more passion behind it. Amen, everybody will be happy over there. It's an exciting song for the fact that it tries to stir the emotions. Amen, it's it's an upbeat tempo, but the song that Ian Bartlett's most known for is a song he wrote after he suffered a stroke. And Ian Bartlett, amen, was there in a state where he couldn't really talk, couldn't really communicate, couldn't really, you know, get around, mobilize. He was in a bed, I think, stricken for many months, if not years. And he died, I think, almost two years after he had that stroke. But in that time period, Brother Hall, between he had that stroke and the time that he eventually passed, he wrote a song that we all sing. Amen. It's simply entitled, Victory in Jesus, My Savior Forever. (laughs) Amen. He wrote, amen, even though he couldn't communicate, he said, there was a time I heard an old, old story of how a Savior came from glory. (laughs) Amen, Ian Bartlett, amen, was never able to sing that song, but it was written down in his son, carried it from camp meeting to camp meeting, place to place, they'd put music to it, amen, but that part of that song that I guess, amen, get stirred by, amen, was when he said, I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit, and somehow, Jesus came, amen, oh, he came and helped him, rescued him, lifted him up, amen, touched him in his life, amen. I don't know about you, but there's victory in the church today. Amen. If you're here, like Brother Jamie's already said, if you'll stand with me, if you can, all over the house. Amen. Brother Jamie's already made reference to it yesterday. Amen. He's already made reference to it. Amen. Throughout this week. Amen. I believe we can we can come to a place of refresh. Amen. And if you're wearied this morning in the midst of the well doing, until we hear well done. Amen. I believe, amen, that weariness is going to be something we face, something we fight, something that has to be dealt with. It's just a common 
piece of the, of the part. Amen. Peter said, think it not strange, this fiery trial, which is to try you, so some strange thing has happened to you. Amen. I understand he was talking to Christians under persecution, dealing with difficulties. Amen. But can I tell you this morning, amen, and the church needs to get back to the place, amen, that realizes that he that keeps the church, amen, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. His church is going to keep marching on. Amen. I like what one preacher said. He said, your church may be in trouble. My church may be in trouble. Amen. There may be trouble within churches, but God's church ain't in trouble tonight or this morning. Amen. He's still keeping and he's still helping. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning, God, you know every heart, every life. God, you know this congregation, the church is represented here this morning. And I pray, Lord, that in the midst of the well-doing, until we hear well done, amen, that the weariness we go through and the struggles of life, God, you would comfort hearts. God, you would strengthen souls. God, that you would help us bear up under the load. Amen. Oh, God, would you touch us today? Would you minister to each and every one? Would you strengthen us, God? Refresh us, Lord. Amen. In our minds, in our hearts. Amen. Where we may be discouraged, where we may have faced disappointments, Lord. God, re- God send that strength. Renew that, that vessel. Amen. Restore that heart. Oh, God, and minister to these hearts today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to simply ask as my brother amen, begins to sing however he feels. Amen. Would you find you that place and would you call on the Lord? Amen. Ask him to refresh your mind. Restore your heart. Amen. Renew your strength if need be. God lift us up, Lord, this morning I pray. It's in the midnight hour when you're hanging by a thread.